there's a lot of different ways you can think of state types, but I'm going to break it down to a couple specific ones. Uh, server state. And I think I'm just going to break down to server state and application client state. Ta-da. See? Magic. All we have here is on blur, run the mutation, and on that success or on that mutation success, revalidate the query. This is an overdue rant. I think that React state is a topic that generally we worry about a lot, but don't discuss solutions about enough. I feel like everybody's really eager to shout about their favorite state manager and not about the like more fundamental problems of what is state and why are we building it? So this is the React state management rant. And I want to start with a really important call out. If you can use React query, you probably should. This is important to understand. A lot of state management isn't managing state in the sense that these are things that can and often change and that user interactions like live manipulate and mutate. Traditionally, when I am talking about state management with React engineers, what we're discussing is state synchronization between the client and the server. The goal isn't so much to create, how do I put it? It isn't to make a state machine with all of these events and actions and behaviors so much as we have data on the server, the client requests it, and then the server gives it to the client and the client has it now. The, so many state problems are that. And I've seen a lot of people reaching for state managers when what they're looking for is a way to synchronize their server with their client. So please, I implore you, if you haven't used React Query yet and you're looking to install Redux or Zustand or one of like the many other things we're going to talk about, please read the React Query uh, or the Practical React Query Guide by TK Dodo first. This does a fantastic job of breaking down the idea of client state versus server state in the things that React Query is good for. If after this, it still feels like it's not the best solution, and there are edge cases in here, even like the using WebSockets with React Query might be a bit of a stretch for some, but at the very least, understand this and how synchronizing your backend and your front end is probably what you're looking for most of the time with state and pick a solution that's good at that first. With that all said, let's talk about state and the different types of state. So what is state? Data, usually data that can change. State is a, a very general catch-all term can be the things in your RAM. It can be the like objects that React has access to. It could be the use state calls. It could be a lot of different things. But generally, the idea of state in any given application layer are is the things in that application layer that can change. What are the different types of state? There's a lot of different ways you can think of state types. But I'm going to break it down to a couple specific ones. Uh, server state and i think i'm just gonna break down to server state and application client state so server state is things like the user's profile like how many or what's the user's name how many people are they friends with what are the current profiles that are on twitch like who's live right now those are server state things that the server has decided and described in a specific way. Server state is what most of our job is to deal with. It's taking things that are on the server and displaying them to the user in a way that is a good experience for the user, but also often that they can interact with and modify the server state. 
application state is things that are specific to the application in a, at any given time. Things like, which page are you on right now? Uh, is your microphone on or off? Do you have a video device connected? So a good simple example of application state would be a, a use state for keeping a menu open and closed. Whereas a more common server state example would be const data loading or is loading equals use query data fetch some data fetch gonna do uh poor uh maple's favorite here did i get enough parens there one off cool right so server state is data that you're fetching or getting from somewhere else that you're then showing in your application so another way you might look at this when i first write it is oh well application state is things you can change and server state is things that you can't so you should probably use application state for anything that the user might want to edit like are you fetching your bio on twitch for example can you just edit the text if you're fetching it from server no you're gonna have to put that in state right well let's think about it for a minute we could we could use the data we get from server to pre-populate the field and pre-populate state. Const data equals use query. I think it has to be an array now. Some query and we'll return default state. And this is the thing that we get back from the server. Actually, rename this to server state. I'll, I'm gonna use a little hacky way. Pretend this code is on the server let content equal default state and we're going to return content here so again pretend this is on a server and then everything here down is client so what we're going to be doing is operating against this external server state inside of our client so now we have this data i can input value equals data and can I find oh it just died and now I can use react query what I was doing there was creating the context that is a single context for all of react query so we'll never have to think about it again really convenient that we have to do this once knowing we have to do it once but once it's done no more contexts no more of the global chaotic context stuff so from here I want to use this data right now. We're putting it as the value here, but that's not great because when I change this, if I keep typing, it doesn't let me because the value's hard set. I have no ability to fuck with this. So I can change it to default value. I think it's just default. Oh no, that reload kills all the things I did. I'm going to be so mad. Okay. So I changed it to default, but it's not there at all. If I put another string, nope, I guess default just doesn't work. A default value is a thing. That's what I thought. Cool. Now we put data here instead. I actually think that would work. So I didn't think this would be loaded in time. Uh, is this immediately loaded? Because it's a function that can run immediately. Console.log re-render with data. Data. Now it comes through undefined initially. Interesting. So if you change the default value. Okay, that's what I thought would happen. So here we have a different default value of like, please fill this in. And even though our code says use data or please fill this in, we always get the default of please fill this in. The reason is this code decides on the default value on the first render when we don't have data yet, because this is a query. This is coming from the back end. However, we want this to be correct. So the quick simple and i would argue the best fix for this would be in is loading here and return some type of placeholder in the interim so if is loading return div loading and now this will always load the state from the server because this item does not render until the server has given us back data and this is populated because is loading this check here will prevent that from rendering. So the default value we get ends up being correct in the end now.
You could also use a key to force a reset, but that would have other potential side effects. So now the question is, how do we change this? Like I can write values in here, but it's not affecting anything. Clearly, I have to go add a state, pull the data from the state, modify the state, and then post it. Kind of. I think we can do a lot simpler here. So first, we need the use mutation that will actually do this. So const mutate equals use mutation. This doesn't need a name, if I recall. So I can just do this. Data content equals data. So now when we call mutate, it will set whatever we pass to it to be this content value. But let's say we have another thing rendering this below. So we have a h1 current value. We want that to be data. So we have this, but I'm changing this. Nothing's changing. We want it to. I can add on submit e for the event. And we want to e dot target. I actually don't know if on submit will fire on enter. I suck at forms. I'm going to do this the easier way of a button. We don't want it to fire on change because we don't want to fire the mutation constantly. I think on blur might be the best thing. So we'll start with on blur just because it's easy. And on blur, we're going to mutate e dot current target dot value. And now I'm going to change this and nothing's going to happen still because this data isn't refetching. We're changing that, but this is a server value we changed. We just posted effectively to the server saying, hey, we're changing this value. And the server's like, yeah, sure, thanks. And then doesn't do anything else. What we need is, and on success, we want to do something. In this case, the easiest thing is refetch. That's not what I copied. And now, oops, wrong button. Ta-da, see, magic. All we have here is on blur run the mutation and on that success or on that mutation success revalidate the query. This might be a it might feel like a tiny bit more code than writing your own state management. However, it is significantly less bug prone and you've reduced the dimension of problems. We no longer have to worry about the relationship between the input, the state, and the server because the relationship is when you leave the input, that becomes the server state. And when that change occurs, things are revalidated. Somebody asked the question of, does this also invalidate the cache? It does. The cache will get updated as well. You also have the option, instead of doing it this way, where we immediately revalidate this with the refetch, we can instead use the query client. So query client equal, or QC equals use query client. And in here, we can do QC dot invalidate queries, pass it some query, which is just the string name from here. Might have to be in an array for that to work. Let's test it. That did not work. Might have to be double wrapped. No? Validate queries. Huh. Interesting. I don't know how the new invalidate queries works. This should absolutely be working, though. Oh, it might be because it needs the, like, undefined. Maybe it doesn't need either. Interesting. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i not sure why this isn't working. Maybe this needs to be null. Yeah, I'm actually not sure why this invalidate queries call isn't working. This should absolutely be fine. Am I getting console warnings? Unexpected token, expected comma. That was not from this, was it? I want to set up the React query dev tools, but that's not trivial inside of this, sadly. installing this but the package isn't resolving correctly it seems like v4 is just kind of fucked right now so we're gonna go back to 3392 there we go what is this upset about oh this needs to be a type there we go does this need a key that mutations didn't need a key what is this upset about why am i getting unknown to hell did I just kill the TypeScript server? Yeah, that's what happened. It knows the type. Whatever. Okay. 
we're gonna just go with it from here i should plan these things ahead if i want to do them with like an example that's working we have some state that is on the server the server is imaginary it's this variable but we're not letting the body access it directly so in this some query function pretend that we're fetching data from the server in this mutate function pretend that we are sending a post request to the server to make a change on that side so the on success case here we are invalidating the query to be or because this value is new and the query should now be refetched to have that data but not necessarily how do i put it in some cases that's not the best path forward like the server might take a while to return that data and you want to have that change on client immediately let's say i make this a, a new promise i haven't done the og promise syntax in a while uh did i get that right ish i think i have to return it yeah i do cool set timeout and we're going to resolve this request with content after a second. So now when I load the page, it's going to load for a sec before it comes in. We made a fake timeout to, or a fake request there. So now when I make a change, so new content, it's going to take a second to update because it's now loading that data in the background. If I was to change is loading to is fetching here. Also, is this mad about, oh, I guess that it doesn't know the type of what this promise resolves. That made it shut up. So if I switch is loading to is fetching, what's gonna happen instead now, whenever I make a change, it goes back in the, the loading state because that data is being fetched again. But let's say we want to avoid that. We don't want to have that time in the back and forth to the server to get new data. And we don't want to have the state where things are stale we can instead of invalidating the query qc dot update or set query data and we can set some query to be the new uh the new data that we have here which on success will actually have the data which we don't want what we want is the variables because this is what you submitted with so we can stop calling content because we don't want to call content in here. We don't know what content is that comes from the server. And now we are setting the query to be whatever data that we took in here. And that is not working because new data default state is what it's, oh no, it's getting the right thing. Maybe the set query data isn't happy. What we're seeing here is we have this content that we're fetching from the server. We have a use mutation that is running on the client. And once that client mutation has succeeded, we immediately show the new value. But now I'm gonna throw one more wrench into things. So now when we resolve this uh, mutation, when we make the change, it also has a one second delay. So when I make the change here, it will take one second for my changes to appear because we're doing them on success. There is one more option you have, which is on mutate. And this doesn't have data. It only has the variables because we haven't finished the mutation yet. This is called an optimistic update. We are optimistically changing things, even if the server doesn't accept the change. So if I was to in here, instead of returning content, returning default, always we will get default initially but then it gets ignored because I'm just overriding that value in the cache with whatever the hell I want to. All of these options make sense in different situations for different things. You can also combine them with the loading states provided by React Query to determine what inputs can or can't be touched at a given time. But what you'll find the more you play with it is the vast, vast majority of weird state cases that you're dealing with and thinking about can probably be solved very well with React Query. Now that we've talked all about interfacing with APIs, 
what about the things that aren't? Because most things are server state, and there's lots of ways that are better than application state to handle making changes to server state. Server state isn't just things that don't change, it's the relationship between the client and the server and how those things change. But there's a lot of things that aren't that. So what isn't server state? I actually get in this argument quite a bit because there's a few people in uh, certain frameworks communities that insist that things that are developed in these like new data fetching patterns somehow invalidate the need for something like React Query. I wholly reject that. I think React Query is useful for lots of other things that aren't server state, like AV device management, uh, navigation state, open, close, menu state. It's a lot of things like this. Uh, one that we have a lot in ping is, is chat visible or open? Where like you have a sidebar where it could or couldn't be open. And this isn't state that only matters for whether or not it renders. This is state that's kind of global because we have a notification system and notifications behave differently depending on where they're being, uh, or depending on whether or not the menu is open and the chat's open. So if chat's closed, notifications pop up at the top. If chat's open, they appear in chat directly. Or things like instantiating the camera device. That's an async function that I have to call and then wait for behavior and then get that back. React Query can do all of these things. I would say for the AV stuff, it's good, not great. For navigation, it's bad. For open close menu stuff, it's terrible. And for is chat open, it's also pretty bad. So for a lot of these types of very application-y problems, especially the synchronous ones, like navigation state and menu state stuff, React Query isn't the best solution. So what should I use instead when it's not ideal? So this is going to be a list in order of what you should prioritize. So option one should be built in React state. Use this if it's simple enough to do. If you have a use state in one place that you want to pass down to some children so they have that data, that's fine. Don't be too scared of prop drilling. I find that a lot of engineers get turned off by the idea of prop drilling so much so that they just don't pass props like ever. That's not the solution here at all. Use state is fine and passing things around is fine as well. I should say built in react use state addendum. I don't recommend context much. Context in react is very powerful for prop drilling effectively. So if you have some properties that aren't going to change much and you want everything from here down in the DOM to have access to those properties, context is a good way to do that. But if those are values that are going to change a bunch, like inputs, like user scores or behaviors or chat or those types of things, context is the most wrong of wrong ways to do it. For things that don't change, context is great. It is a simpler, I should say simpler. It's a more complex, but more, but less boilerplate code prop drill pipe. The reason why you don't want to use context for those things is it is passing everything in it to everything that consumes it. So if you have a component that is consuming the, if you have a context that has the user object and whenever the user clicks a button, it increases the user's score and that changes the user object in the user context. Now, everything consuming that context has to re-render whenever that comes through. React Memo will not solve the issue. It will double the amount of compute you're doing while not solving the issue. It's no react or react context is an effective way to say from here down, everything has access to this data and everything will re-render when the data changes. React context is for dependency injection, pretty much nothing else. If, if you're looking to make passing props a little more ergonomic, maybe use context. Otherwise probably don't touch context. So what do you use instead? Well, we're going to draw a diagram. So. 
This one's going to have a question in it. Why didn't use state work? There's a couple different reasons why use state might not work for you. Reason one might be I need a global. So you are cool with use state as it is, but you don't want to have to pass values constantly up and down everywhere. One of the best things to use in React if use state isn't like ergonomically pleasant due to the prop drilling and all the other chaos, and you just want to have effectively like a use state that you could reuse in 15 places, Jodai. Jodai is fantastic. Jodai has a system called Atoms. It's an atomic state manager. So the simple examples are like, you define an atom by importing atom, and then you give it a value. And now when you call that with use atom, you get the value and a setter. And you can call use atom on a given atom in a hundred different places in your app. And when one of them changes it, all of the rest update. No context, no chaos, just a simple define an atom and then consume that atom in other places. You can also derive atoms using their uh, derivation systems. They have cool recipes and things like that. It's a lot of fun to be had with Jodai. But generally speaking, its strength is I have this thing that I want to change. And now it will or and now when I change it, it will update in other places. So if I so if I had a context that had 15 values in it and any one changes, all of the other values or all of the things consuming the other values have to re-render and update as well. With Jodai, you can just define 15 atoms, and then whatever consumes whichever specific atom updates accordingly. If you had an atom that had a big object in it with lots of keys, and you were consuming one key off that, then it's still going to re-render the same way context does. But if you use atoms to break up your context, it's a really efficient way to do things. All of that said, there are a few reasons why you might not want to use Atom, and those are the other directions I want to go in here. One of them is I need a machine. Actions, events, etc. So if you have, instead of like const count Atom equals create zero, and then we want to like or and then we can call const count set count equals use atom count atom. And then below here, I can call set count five. And that just works. But let's say we don't want the ability to set count. We want the ability to increment count. So I'd want this to pass get increment. And then we call increment with no argument. You can't do that with atoms. You'd have to redefine all of that functionality yourself, and it's not going to be a great experience to do such. So if you want to store, I'm going to move this example over here. So if you want to store instead, this is where Zustand really shines. I'll write that below quick before I forget. Zustand. So in, just, or in Zustand, I'll just go to the docs because they're really good. You create a store instead of a value. So in here, we create a store. It has bears, which is the value in it. And then you create actions, which are updating events on here. They're functions you can call. So when we call increase, it sets the state to be bears plus one. And when we call remove all bears, it sets it to zero. So when you use something like Sustand, you are handling the ways you interact with the state as part of the machine so that when others consume it, you know which behaviors they're able to work with. This is a machine, not shared state. This is a little closer to context and how it works, where you can define different things on it. The big difference is you can subscribe to specific values. So if I had bears and a different key on here and that other key updated all the time, when I select from it, so use bear store state state dot increase, or in this case state dot bears, this will only re-render when state dot bears changes. With controls, this will never re-render ever because increase population is never going to re-render or never going to change. And as long as that function never changes, which it won't, we're not rebinding it. It's never going to re-render. 
I've seen a few questions about other solutions, in particular recoil with uh, Jodai. Yeah, recoil is pretty similar to Jodai. Jodai is a lot simpler, better maintained, and more likely to keep doing well. I'd probably use that. But yeah, Zustain and Jodai are my two go-tos right now because they solve those two different types of problems. I'm not going to bother with a code snippet. I showed everything I wanted to there. So if your reason for you stay not working is you want something more global, go to Jodai. If your reason for wanting something other than you state is it's not actionable and it's not something you can interact with more directly, Zustan's a really good solution. It also has some fun magic tricks. Uh, let me reopen the docs here where you can access Zustan outside of React, which I do pretty regularly. There are some examples. Uh, yeah, without React. So you can call from Zustan Vanilla, get state, set state, subscribe, and destroy. And now outside of React, you're able to make changes and update things. So I'll off often bind listeners externally that update the store outside of React, and then React magically updates itself whenever those things change. It's a really convenient way to do external uh, like management of data that is internally operated within. So if built-in React state isn't working, you should probably go with Jodi or Sustand. I use both at the same time pretty often. It's really nice. There are lots of other solutions. I see people mentioning Redux. Redux was great and it made all of this possible, but it's way more work to set up. It is way more complex overall, and it's a decent bit of code. Remix, er, Redux is very large. Jodai is 3.39 kilobytes, and Zustand is 1.16 kilobytes. Yeah, Redux does so much more than you need. It does all of these things, but you probably don't need all of these things. Almost everything I build needs neither of these. It's very rare that I need to reach for these. We use Jodai for some like global device management stuff in Ping, like which devices are active. And then we use Ustand for like the chat room to manage who's connected and like WebSocket connections, stuff like that. Everything else is React query. All the stuff we talked about up here. Generally speaking, most of the stuff that I am worrying about when I'm worrying about the state and the data of my React application is data that I'm synchronizing from my server. So I don't need a state library more often than not. When I do, Jodi and Zustand solve the specific problems that React's built-in state were not built to solve. So I reach for these two very minimal and light solutions when I need them, and I don't when I don't. One more option I want to bring up, because it is really cool and more people should probably use it for complex things but less people should be talking about it because most people aren't working on those problems is x state x state's goal is like proper state machine architecture in the very formal sense so like state visualizers with really complex diagrams to see all the ways things go this is all of the code for a fetch as you can see that's 39 lines of code for a fetch, and you have to write your own type definitions on top of it. Don't use this for store or for like server state. Don't use this for simple state machines and values you want to synchronize between things. Use this because you have some very complex, custom, absurd shit, and you want a diagram that lines up with the machine that you can use to obsess over it. I have found very few use cases where this level of architecting your state is necessary. It can be very useful, but you need to have so much complexity in your state that introducing this makes it simpler to reason about because you are inherently introducing complexity when you introduce something like uh, X state. So be, be careful when you add in something like this. But if you know what you're doing and you know your problem sucks, it can work really well. Trash just mentioned in chat that he likes it, but it falls apart with sibling machine communication, which means you have like a greater machine and then sub like children machines for different things within your app. I do that all of the time with Zustand. Like 
every single day in ping we have a, a greater zustan store that is the device manager and we have sub stores for random shit in the call it all of these things interact by calling functions to and from each other and it's fine the boundaries that we're defining there are usually react itself and using zustan's context provider as well as like the store instantiation protocol or methods that they provide it's pretty easy for me to build a state machine for one thing and have it interact in simple ways with the other things. So highly recommend trying other things that are simpler until you hit the limits of them. You'll notice that that's generally my philosophy. But what you're going to see here is how I'm applying it, which is start with use state, use React query and things like it for the server state side. And then you, when you can't use state because you're running the specific problems with it, grab Jodi and grab Zustand. I hope that this helps. Hey, did you know that over half my viewers haven't subscribed yet? That's insane. Y'all just click these videos and listen to me shout and hope that the algorithm is going to show you the next one. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, maybe even the bell next to it so that you know when I'm posting videos. Also, if you didn't know this, Almost all of my content is live streamed on Twitch while I'm making it. Everything on the YouTube is cuts, clips, whatever from my Twitch show. So if you're not already watching, make sure you go to twitch.tv slash Theo, where I'm live every Wednesday around 2 or 3 p.m. And I go live on Fridays pretty often as well. Thank you again for watching this video. Really excited. Thank you.